Hello and welcome back to this, the latest episode of NIWFA Lockdown. The show which goes behind the scenes to catch up with the various clubs from across the NIWFA to see how they're dealing with the current lockdown situation. Tonight's episode sees us going below the shadow of the Scrabble Tower to catch up with the girls from Cumberland Ladies. So, without further ado, let's see what they have to say. So I'm joined tonight by the ladies from Cumberac Ladies. First of all, thank you very, very much for agreeing to join us here on NAWFA Lockdown this evening. We're going to start off by speaking to Lee Skelton. Lee, first of all, good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening. Hey, yeah. Just to, first of all, I want to talk to you a wee bit about, I know obviously you work for MenCap. I think that's your full-time job. Tell us a wee bit about what's involved in that particular job for yourself. Um, well, it's basically, we're just basically trying to get people with uh, disabilities or learning difficulties to try and live as independent lives as possible. Okay. So we just kind of support their kind of daily needs, whether that be uh, taking taking meds or um, just general things like learning to cook, uh, okay. anything at all that would, would make their life independent. In terms of the lockdown situation, what sort of impacts that are having on that job at the moment? Um, well, obviously, like the people we work with, really rely on routine. Um, like that's something that's really important for their lives, and obviously, that's not happening right now. So we're just trying to keep it as close to normal as possible for them. Um, so obviously, like we're still taking the guys out for their shopping and stuff, and trying to keep them doing that maybe once a week or once every fortnight, so that they're still getting that small bit of normality in their lives. But it must add an additional challenge you could do without, obviously. Sorry, I missed that. I'm saying there, it must add an additional challenge that you could do without. Oh, yeah, but but um, I can thrive on challenge and stuff, so I, I enjoy it. Okay. I think you're also involved in an organisation called Sports. Do you want to explain that one to us? Yeah, okay. So um, Sports is the Suicide Prevention Offering Recovery Through Sports Group. Um, there's, uh, we kind of started that at the end. The guy, he's the main lead for the whole of the kind of Cumber area. Uh, and the girls got involved with it. Uh, we've since then put uh, a mental health policy in place for the entire club. So that will be getting released very soon. Um, we also have got now um, several members on our, on our squad. So there's myself and Amy um, are the, the kind of main contacts for if anybody themselves are struggling or if anybody related to the club, whether that be parents, um, fans, supporters, coaches, whatever, who think someone else is struggling, um, they can direct these people to ourselves as well so that we're their kind of port of contact and make sure, you know, that they always have the help and support that they really need if they're struggling. Okay, I think um, that's, that's obviously great work you're doing there, uh, down to Cumber. I know you also is producer, so like a little short mental health video last week as well. Yeah. What, what was the background of that one? Um, well, last week was actually Mental Health Awareness Week, so um, we just kind of wanted to do a wee bit for the for our club and our community, just to show that everybody out there, like you know, we are here, we are we, we are there to, be, to talk to and to approach if if and when needed. Because um, I know, obviously, especially in the current conditions, like a lot of people are going to struggle with their mental health now more than ever, um, especially with the stats saying that one in four actually do suffer from mental health. So yeah. we just wanted to yeah. show. Everyone there, we are we are here to talk to, and we all go through it. You know. That's excellent. Listen, we're going to have a quick look at a part of that video. I know the entire video is on the, the club's Facebook page. If anybody wants to watch it, well, we'll, we'll have a look at part of that video, and, I, and then we'll come back and speak to you a little bit more about football. Sport helps my mental health by making sure I get some time to myself. Sport helps my mental health because it gives me an outlet, which means that I don't worry about the little things. Sport helps my mental health. It gives me a chance whenever I step out onto a pitch or a training field just to forget everything that may be on top of my home life, work life. You just forget it all and you go out and enjoy yourself with your friends. I love sport because it's a brilliant stress buster plus I love the outdoors. Yeah, and sport is important for my mental health because, well for me personally, I love playing football. Um, so having like that to look forward to every week, um, like training and matches and stuff. Uh, especially matches is um, yes, yeah, it's good. Like sport helps my mental health because it gives me a place to go, no matter what's going on in my life, and I know I just have people there who just accept me. Like sport for me, uh, basically 
changed my life, especially football. It, um, it's the reason like that I get through some of the darkest times in my life. Um, without it, I'd be totally lost. It's it's given me a, a sense of family and a sense of belonging. Lee, concentrating a wee bit more now on the footballing side of things, I think you signed for Cumber last year. Uh, so you had one division, obviously one season, should I say, been in the Premier League. How was that as an experience? Um, it was it was a lesson. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, it was uh, it was definitely like a test of our our character and and our our kind of uni- uniting as a team, you know, our, our cohesion and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think we st- we, we stuck well together. You know, we I don't think we actually lost. I think we lost like one player um, from last season, and that wasn't even to do really with the football, it was more of a retiring thing. Um, and we've actually gained several new players already. So we clearly we clearly held our own and, and, and put out a good um, a good image of the club. Okay. I'm mean, listening here obviously to yourself talking and I know for well that's not an Irish accent. That comes from Scotland somewhere. Whereabouts in Scotland <laughs> were you born? Uh, Glasgow, actually. Okay. And you've ambitions to go back and play for Rangers at some point, is that right? I know there's a couple of North Irish girls at the moment, so maybe they'd make you feel at home, but is that the long-term dream anyway? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've I'm, I'm always been a Rangers fan myself anyway, but obviously since Rangers have become the first professional, like entirely professional club in Scotland, it's, it's quite amazing, so it'd be quite cool to be a part of it. I have played against them before um, in that league, but just being a part of the club that I've supported all my life would be fantastic. Who were you playing against them with? What type of club were you ever in? Uh, I was with Falker Ladies, but we partnered up with Stirling University. So it was Stirling University women's team, um, where we were in the SPL playing against the, like, the Rangers, I think, Glasgow City and stuff. Very good. Uh, you do, obviously, you've been based there to play for Rangers, maybe someday play for Scotland. You do realise that if you do play for Scotland, you score against Northern Ireland. You lose a lot of friends. You do realize that, now, don't you? That's okay, but <laughs> I'm 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 in goals mind, so technically I won't be scoring any goals. Ah, I'll well, stop okay. in Northern Ireland score them. Let's say you save a penalty in the last minute. You'll not go down too well. That's okay. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. <laughs> Fair enough. Listen, I know you girls at Cumber have also done an awful lot of TikToks. I've been watching through some of them. You've been doing all sorts of things, including kicking tea bags into teacups or something bizarre like that. So. Once again, we're going to have a quick look through some of those videos now to see exactly what you've got up to, and then we're going to come back and chat a little bit more at that stage. Joined now by Emer O'Bray. Emer very much here. Welcome to the show. I understand uh, you're another player with Cumber, but previously I think you played with Glentorn ladies, is that right? Uh, yeah, I played for Glentorn from when I was 13 for right. about five seasons, I think it was, um, okay. through the seniors, yeah. Played for the reserves for a couple of years whenever we had the reserves, um, yeah, and then stopped a, th- a few years ago. And I'm I'm right thinking I might be completely wrong on this, but did you get a red card against them at some point? <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> and it, it was my second game for Cumber. 
Right. I uh, I handballed and saved saved the goal basically and got a right. straight red card right. after okay. about fifteen minutes. It wasn't my finest moment. No, it's not your finest moment. You're actually yeah. studying at the moment to be an accountant, but I know you're you maybe thinking of changing that. But at the moment, you're working at home for an accountancy company. Is that right? Yeah, uh, so I study finance at Queen's um, and it's my placement year. So I was down in Dublin for the past nine months working for a firm called KPMG. Right. So it's been um, it's been a lesson anyway, it's sort of, it's made me sort of realise it's not maybe the path I want to go down. So I've still got final year to sort of figure out if, you know, there's an area of it that I would like to do anyway. Yeah, well, it's good to learn to learn an early stage of the match. I understand as well as playing a bit of football, you, you play a bit of netball, is that right? You know, my, yeah. my friend Karen Rolo. Karen's obviously a big advocate of the netball again. Yeah, Karen's a big um, name in Napa, Northern Ireland, anyway. Um, but yeah, I've been playing Napa since I was maybe 10 or 11. Right. So yeah, I've been playing for a club called Belfast Ladies um, for years. And I was playing um, down in Dublin there last year. And then since I've been in Dublin, I started training with the Ireland squad. So it's been great um, getting back into international Napa as well. So have you actually been playing at the international level? I played for Northern Ireland for under 17s and under 19s, mm -hmm. so I got to play in a few tournaments um, like Europeans and stuff. But then for Ireland, I only started training there in January, so and we got a couple months of training, and then obviously coronavirus kicked in, so I haven't actually got to play any international matches for them yet. But hopefully in the future, at some stage, if I get picked. I know as a sport, it's been doing great strides recently. I know obviously there's a few home internationals and stuff played here in Northern Ireland uh, over the course mm -hmm. of time, so. A bit like football, the lockdowns came from a very, very bad time for netball. Must be very frustrating on both sides from your viewpoint. Yeah, definitely. Look, it's frustrating with regards to netball and football. Um, we were meant to have Euros and Gibraltar there for netball a week or two ago. So it's obviously, you know, gotten not being able to go. But everything's just postponed, I guess, not cancelled. It'll happen at some stage. Well, that's not so bad. Right? Okay, finally, we're going to catch up with Sarah. Sarah McKellen. Uh, Sarah, how are you? Not too bad. <laughs> How are you? Uh, not too bad. When I think of Cumberac Ladies football team, you're always the first person I think of because you're the one maybe stands out a little bit more. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, to be honest. Maybe it's the, same that that it. <laughs> the ones always sort of right, right, stuck right in the heart of things, to be honest, you know. How are you finding things under lockdown? Yeah, it's not too bad. I'm keeping myself busy. Um, I'm not working at the minute, like, but I'm looking right. for jobs. Just keeping myself busy with exercise and making quizzes for the girls, really. I think before today, before tonight's recording, you were, I don't know, it was a 30-mile cycle trip, or I know what it was, it was some mad thing like that, was it? Yeah, yeah, I went down to Donaga Day, I live down near Port of Ogui, and I cycled up to Donaga Day to see my granny, just as socially distanced, obviously, uh, and um, my sister brought the chairs in the back of her car, and we had a wee cup of tea at the pier, so it was lovely. That sounds like a nice wee day out there, sounds yeah, like a nice. really fun day. Uh, you're trained to be a, uh, a primary school teacher, is that the long-term plan? Yeah, that's the long-term plan. I was over in Newcastle in England, but obviously it got kind of cut short because of everything. So at the minute, hopefully going to graduate in June, but yeah, and then get a job or a part-time job in um, September. So that's the way things are looking at the minute. Whenever you were over in England, you were playing up a bit of football over there as well. Was it Wall's End or something you were playing for? Is that what's what sort of level are they at? Uh, yeah, it was Wall's End, boys club, ladies team actually their name was. Um, we were in the, I was in the reserve team and um, we were actually top of the league and we were in the final of the cup as well and then everything got cancelled and the whole yeah. season got put in void, like completely non void. So didn't get to complete the season. But no, I really enjoyed it over there. It was a nice wee difference to play with the Geordies and then when they heard yeah. your act they were raking the life out of you. But it was good, I enjoyed yeah. it. You've been a cumber now quite a quite a few years away been right, right and saying uh... Obviously, then you've experienced you know, life at the, sort of the Premier Division last season. Obviously, prior to that, you were with them in the Championship. How big a gulf is it between those two divisions, do you think? Oh, I think it's a massive gap between the Championship and the Premiership. It's just, it's almost ridiculous, the difference in mm -hmm. um, level. You know, I thought playing, we were playing more matches, uh, a lot more intensity. And just the level of players, I think, in the Premiership are, are unbelievable. Like, and... Not the, to say that the championship there aren't, but it's just the levels. Just there is a big difference, definitely in quality. How do you think that gap can be you know, closed? Do you think there is a way of closing it, really? Personally, I think that maybe the bigger teams having a squad of 30 players when they're only playing 11 every week. Yeah. Would make a big difference, you know, like having 
local girls playing for their local clubs instead of the big clubs kind of catching them and bringing them in and never playing them. I think that would make a big difference for a lot of things. No, right. We spoke to Lee earlier on. She's obviously got ambitions to play for Scotland. I know you, in theory, could play for Sweden if you wanted to. I think you're great. Is it your great grandmother, your grandmother, or something Swedish? And my mom, my mom is Swedish. Right. Oh, your mother's Swedish, right? Okay. Yeah, my, my mom is Swedish. Whereas Lee sort of indicated she'd be quite happy to, to do one over Northern Ireland. You would never desert Northern Ireland. You, you'll always stick to Northern Ireland. You're not a Sweden, wouldn't you? I am. Um, would never get on the Swedish international team. They're unbelievable. <laughs> They're absolute beasts. So, good say. Like Jenny, I don't think there's any worry in that. Maybe the Tiddly Winks team or something like that. <laughs> you know, football. Well, you never know. You can only win dream at the end of the day. Listen, girls, it's been an absolute pleasure to catch up with you tonight. Thank you so, so much for taking the time out to come on the NIWFA lockdown. And although as we don't know exactly if this season's going to get going or not, just in the meantime, just please stay safe and hopefully not for too long before we see you all back playing on the pitch again. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks very much. So that completes this week's episode of NIWFA Lockdown. Thanks once again so much to the ladies of Cumberac for taking part in this week's show. If you or your club would like to get involved in a future episode, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us through the email address now shown at the bottom of your screen. That's 1880video at gmail.com. Alternatively, just contact us through the NIWFA Facebook page. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching today's episode. Until we see you again, stay safe and take care.